Burger King announced a merger with Canadian coffee and donut chain Tim Hortons in a deal valued at about $11 billion. The combined company is now the third largest fast food chain in the world, behind only McDonald's and KFC. The deal has been the subject of much discussion and controversy because it's what is known as a tax inversion, which means that Burger King is moving its corporate headquarters to Ontario to take advantage of Canada's favorable tax rates. Corporate tax rates up in the Great White North are 15% compared to 35% in the U.S. Billionaire investor Warren Buffett has had to defend his involvement in the Tim Hortons Burger King deal. His company Berkshire Hathaway has provided $3 billion in financing, although they'll have no involvement in the management. Buffett is famously known for proposing that very high income individuals pay higher taxes, so that the fact that he's involved in a deal that involves what some are calling tax dodging is a little bit controversial. Combined, Burger King and Tim Hortons rake in over $23 billion a year in annual revenues. They have 18,000 outlets in 100 countries around the world. One thing that Burger King's been doing really well in the past four years since Brazilian private equity company 3G Capital bought the company has been expanding, and especially in developing countries. So we can expect the same to happen with Tim Hortons. In fact, a source very close to the talks said that it won't be unusual to see, for instance, a Burger King across the street from a Tim Hortons in somewhere like South Africa or Central America in months to come. I think what's especially interesting about this deal is that Burger King is really acting like a startup versus a very old established fast food company. If you think about their management team, the average age is something like low 30s. We have the CEO, Daniel Schwartz, who's 33 years old, the CFO is 28, the head of IR is 29. And these guys are taking a gamble. A lot of people in the United States have never heard of Tim Hortons. It's not a household name. It's in 11 states, mostly along the Canadian border. So will this pan out to their advantage? It remains to be seen. But it certainly appears that you know Burger King as a company is taking a risk here. One thing Americans should know, as Tim Hortons potentially starts popping up in malls and food courts around the country, is that calling it Tim Hortons signals that you're not a real true fan, like a lot of Canadians are, and they're very proud of this company. You have to call it Timmy's or Timmy Ho's. This isn't the first high-profile tax inversion case this year. In fact, a few healthcare companies have done the same thing to try and avoid high tax rates. And as my colleague Jeremy Bogaisky reported, this has raised the ire of President Obama and Congress. So right now the Treasury Department is preparing to make some changes to curb this practice.